Hello, this is Greg Young, and I'm here to go through another walkthrough of Mighty Moose with you. Mighty Moose is a continuous test runner from Continuous Test. You can visit us at continuoustest.com. In this walkthrough, what we're going to be looking at is our graphing system. As many people know, Continuous Test and Mighty Moose at its core has some very, very advanced uh, static analysis for dealing with things at an IL level and figuring out um, how couplings can actually behave at runtime. This is actually a very difficult problem when we start getting into things like inheritance and runtime generics, um, especially with Cohen contravariance, uh, as well as dealing with delegates and things like ienumerables within the .NET framework. Now, originally when we built out the minimizer, the minimizer is purely static. And kind of like when we're going to talk about with the risk margins, this is something that was a hidden benefit that came about over time where we started looking at it and it turned out to be really, really useful. So without further ado, let's jump in and take a look at how a graph would work. So I'm inside of the bypass timer method now. And if I were going to hit control shift Y and G, it will bring me up my graph. Now, normally graphs will come up in far less than one second, um, even on the VM on my MacBook Pro, uh, where we've been running with one gig of memory for a long period of time, it's still coming up in maybe at tops a few hundred milliseconds. Now, you'll notice that the node all the way to the left here is green. This is representing that it's the node that I searched for. The nodes all the way on the right over here are yellow. That's representing that they're tests. Sometimes we might also find a node inside of here, which is blue, which means that it's actually a node that's on an interface. When we find an interface, we'll only uh, walk past interfaces uh, into test assemblies. We will not continue past interfaces to other objects. Uh, we do this for lots of reasons. The largest one being is that we're primarily a unit testing tool, not an integration testing tool. However, if you're very interested and actually having those changes happen, there is a setting that can be set down in the bowels of the system that will actually make it walk on interfaces, not only back to test assemblies, but also to all the objects that actually use the interface. Now, inside of this graph, I can navigate around. I can do plus and minus to move in and out of my graph. If I do right arrow, left arrow, up, down, or if I use VIN keystrokes, it will basically move my cursor around inside. If I were to use Alt with that key, it's going to also do panning uh, for me. Now, when I'm on a node, I can always see which node I'm on because there's a small red highlight there. You can see it if we zoom in a bit. Now, when I'm on a node, if I were to hit Enter, it will actually bring me to that place in code inside of Visual Studio. This makes for very, very fast navigation within my code. As an example, I might come through here and I'm already navigated to that piece of code. Um, we might go to a bit of something more deep. Let's just go to a command handler really quick. Or we'll take this one and we'll do control shift YG and I'm all the way navigated back to its test. The other interesting thing with this is it not only lets me see the tests that are directly coupled to this code. As an example, if I were to go back to this piece of code and I were to bring up the graph, if there were tests that were hitting this particular method, I would see those tests come up in a separate path. Now, we can actually see this occurring if we jump in and we head down to and I do not keep ReSharper on this particular machine because it is my testing machine. But if I were to come down here and I were to look at something like Active Account here, we get the graph that comes right up. Now, as you can see here, if I zoom in slightly, here we actually have a distinct path that's coming off. It's not a path off of our constructor, it's actually a path off of the Create New and over here, we can see that that path actually comes back to tests over here, which are completely distinct from the tests that were coming off of the create new from the create account method. Over here, we can see that it comes through an interface to a generic test fixture, which comes back to our tests. We can then, of course, hit enter and navigate to that point in code. Now, 
sometimes we might find some pretty big graphs. Um, you'll notice that this one comes up as a yellow. But if I bring this up, we can see that there's a whole slew of tests back here, even though we've got some code that's out here. And we can even see, if we look over here, that as we mentioned before, sometimes these things can cycle forward. Now, most of this just looks like properties that are coming back and they're being associated back to this constructor, which isn't necessarily such a scary thing. Especially when we look over here and we see these are just execute methods. So this code isn't nearly as scary as it might actually end up being, but we're still going to flag it as yellow here. One interesting thing that you can look for when you bring up graphs, especially if the code was being marked yellow, is does this kind of look like a spaceship with a big yellow engine over on this side? If you're finding big yellow engines, it tends to be better than if you're just seeing flat lines or the, the worst thing you can see is when there's just a large number of white nodes over here and maybe one or two small yellow nodes over on the right hand side. Now, what we've been looking at is the overlay style of graph. There's other styles of graph as well. As an example, we could come here to various and we could select the Visual Studio. Now, in Visual Studio, I can say Control Shift Y G, and you'll notice that it comes up with a graph in the Visual Studio Editor, and I can set it to 100%. Now, we have not spent a huge amount of time making this work wonderfully and look very, very beautiful. The reason why we have not spent a huge amount of time on this particular graph viewer is because, frankly, we don't actually have anybody that uses it, because more often than not, it's far slower than our overlays. We also have another style of graph. You can come here and you can select Window. When I do a window, I can run that, and I get up my little graph. I can push it off to the side over here. Now, if I shoot back, to the code, we'll navigate there by going from the graph. What I can do is I can select this, I will copy it here, and I am running in Mighty Moose mode right now. This is important to recognize, that's why it's not running right now, because I've not hit save yet. When I hit save, we can actually watch this graph. And this graph will actually end up updating. It updates as we go through, and we change code inside of the stuff that's going on here, it will actually update inside of our graph that's off on the side. So basically our window is constantly updating and showing us new information inside the graph. This can be extremely valuable when we go through and we look at um, looking at a stereotypical TDD type session where we might wanna keep a graph up on a monitor and that way, with the graph up on the monitor, we can actually go through and just leave it up. And as we change code, we can see what the TDD, uh, what we were TDDing, the method we were TDDing, we can see what its graph is and how it's changing over time as we're actually changing the code. Now, so far we've looked at this um, only in terms of working for Windows. Now, there's two last bits here in the configuration. The first bit is We've also got GraphViz. Now GraphViz, you generally would not use it in Windows. That's basically there for people that happen to be running in Mac and Linux. And we will talk about um, our support for Mac and Linux in another bit of a walkthrough. The last one that we've just got here is the light overlay. The reason that we have the light and the dark overlay is because the dark, for instance, looks great on my MacBook Pro, but it looks absolutely awful on a projector, whereas the light one uh, has the exact opposite relationship. So, this has been a quick walkthrough of the graphing support inside of Mighty Moose. I hope this has been beneficial for you guys, and I hope you can find as much value in the graphs as I have, especially working as a consultant where I'm generally not familiar with the code that I'm working in, and bringing up the graphs is a very quick way for me to be able to get a good feel for what's going on around me. Thanks a lot.